When we're talking about decision-making cameras, however, here's where you want to pay attention to you as the company officer. You want high resolution, minimum of 320 by 240. This is based off NFPA 1801 standard. You can look this up and read it yourself for free. You want a minimum refresh rate of 30 hertz. It recommends 25. I would say at least 30. You don't want to even play with less than 30. Most of the good ones are 60 hertz. You want a wider field of view so you can see the room better, see the bigger picture. You don't want a narrow field of view. You want a thermal sensitivity of 70 millikelvin or less. I'm going to show you pictures why. You want an effective temperature range versus I got a camera that can see 2,000 degrees. Why do you need to see 2,000 degrees? There are three or four cameras that do that. And there's also three or four cameras that only go up to 1,200 degrees that produce a better picture than those 2,000 degree cameras do. Why is that? They're trying to impress us with how hot it can see, not how well it can see. And you need to know the difference between image enhanced cameras and standard infrared. An image enhanced camera, currently there's only three on the market that do this, produce an amazing picture and allow you to do things that you wouldn't normally do with an infrared camera. We'll talk about why. So when you're going to buy a camera, some of you said you're going to do some trials on it. You want to make your life easy? Read NFPA 1801. I can give you the cheat sheet on it. It's based on a lot of things, but it's basically interoperability, durability, and resolution. That's the three main components. Is the camera ergonomic? Is, does it basically, do your, do, will your firefighters carry it? Do they like the way it feels? It'll come down to, is it a pistol grip or a flashlight style? Believe me, we're finicky. If we don't like the way it feels, it's going to stay on the truck. They're not going to carry it. Who's going to provide the service for your camera? Do you want a camera company that's going to take you six weeks to send the camera to Sweden, or are you going to want a service rep that's going to get it back to you in 48 hours? Think about that when you do business with them. Ask them, can you get me a loaner in 48 hours? If they can't, say, no, thank you. Because a lot of departments, the majority of them, are two stations or less, and if they got six or eight cameras in their whole department and four of them go down, they're in trouble. You want a wide field of view, you want a high resolution, you want high refresh rate, and you want simple, easy to understand color palettes, which is basically the TI basic color palette, which is recommended by NFPA, which is black, gray, white, yellow, orange, red. Pretty simple. No rainbow, no iron bow, no green bow, no I don't know. No, none of that stuff. You want to get into that? Come to me to thermography class. We can learn a lot about color palettes and what they're really used for. Solar farms and windmills and uh Musk, they're doing stuff with uh, sports medicine and all kind of cool stuff with it. But it's not for fire tech, okay? And those of you who are Draeger fans, this is a Draeger UCF 9000 looking from the hallway. You can see the edges of the stairwell looking into the fire room. See how detailed that is. Pretty sharp image. So why is that important for you to have that NFPA 1801 certification? Interoperability is a big thing. If I buy an 1801 certified camera this year and five years from now, we're tired of it. and We decide we want another one. If we buy another camera that meets the spec, guess what? You don't have to retrain your firefighters. The green power button's going to be the same. The symbols on the screen are going to be the same. All you got to do is teach them any ins and outs of the special little uh, features the camera may have. The other thing is it's going to be durable. It's going to be tested to some extreme rigors because when they put, when they take this camera and test it, they take 19 of them to destroy. And if you read the standard, it's pretty, it's pretty brutal what they put the camera through and has to go through all that testing and still pass an image quality test. High resolution still has to work. You want to have a highly resolvable image so you can locate who Mrs. Smith and their children. And it's also intrinsically safe. Those who are my hazmagicians on the classroom tonight understand the value of an intrinsically safe device. Now, there's some argument from those same individuals that once you drop this device, it's no longer intrinsically safe. I can't comment on that. I just heard that. Don't know that's more anecdotal. May be the truth. Point being is I'm not taking a non-intrinsically safe device if I work in Louisiana or Texas or in Midwest where there's a lot of refineries, period. Because the one I used to carry around with the letters MSA, and we dig up gas lines and clamp them. My department never told me not to carry that and hold that over a gas line hole. And we did it all day long. So why is it? Why is 1801 important? This is a direct quote from a research paper from Michael Whitty, which basically says what I just told you is if you buy your camera meeting this standard and train them on it, you future-proof your training. You don't have to retrain them. You just have to train them. Say, all right, we got a new camera. Let's, 
Let's go test it in the fire. Let's do our evolutions like we normally do. Let's see how this one performs like the old one. Still turns on the same. Symbols are still the same. High and low sensitivity, temperature bar on the right, spot temperature, bottom right-hand corner, four battery bars, triangle indicates low sensitivity. All that's the same, intrinsically safe. You just rock on. And this is a cool picture from my friend Tim Mills who helps us sometimes. Understanding thermal sensitivity. I want you to know something about this picture. How detailed is this image? This is a burn container. But you can see the edges of their helmet the MSA face pieces, those of you who are air pack uh, geeks, you can tell the difference between certain air packs. You can look at the detail in their helmet. Some of them's wearing the Euro style helmet. Some of them's wearing more of the uh, wildland style helmet. You can see through the colors. By the way, that's an NFPA standard. The colorization must be translucent or transparent. But the lower this thermal sensitivity rating, the better your chances of seeing a fellow firefighter who's down or a victim. That's pretty darn important. I mean, that's the whole reason we had cameras in the beginning was to search for what was lost and to find them. If your camera doesn't see well in a fire, I strongly consider you finding one that does. I can help you with that. But don't just buy it based on what the salesman tells you. Test it. Put it to the test, okay? Because this is a, this is a uh, baby doll thing we put in uh, Hanover's burn container. This is in the lower 48 of the burn container, but look how clear this image is in the newer camera. I mean, you can see the nose, the cheek structure, even the little hands. This is uh, probably 18 inches long, taken six feet away. So the lower that number is, in this case, the Bullard QXT or NXT is 35 millikelvin. That's great. Then you look at the MSA, when it's in high sensitivity, it's less than 40 millikelvin. That's great. But when it switches to low sensitivity, it's less than 235 millikilo, which is awful. So it means when it goes into high heat, I'm not gonna see that little kid. That's why it's so important because we wanna be able to differentiate, is that a pile of clothes or is that a kid? If you see here, we've taken this infant mannequin and we have put it in the cooler. Why did we do that? Because the kid is 98.6 degrees. Other people are heating them up, it's a mistake. You teach your firefighters to look for a white hot victim. They're not going to see a white hot victim unless they're outside. Notice the bottle on the back of the firefighter's back and their helmet. They just came from a vent inner search, came from outside to inside. The bottle is cold because this person's breathing air. You're getting condensation. Okay, these are things you learn by using the camera. I can tell this firefighter is breathing. I can see his regulator line's cold. I can see his bottle's cold. And I can clearly see this victim, even though the rest of this environment is kind of blending together because it's superheated. Check out our mannequin in the back of the room. You want to do a great demonstration with your firefighters after class. Those of you who are in colder areas, get your burn barrel outside, get it away from the building, please, and then put a mannequin, mm, I'd say six feet back from it, but lined up probably three feet away from it as far as I was looking at it. Six feet back, three feet to the left. I want you to take your camera and scan from left to right. As soon as the mannequin comes into view, stop. To make sure the burn barrel is not into view. Then slowly move the camera to where the heat source is in view along with the mannequin. If you have an older, low resolution camera, when that camera switches from high to low sensitivity, the mannequin will almost disappear because it focuses in on the heat source and then you don't see the victim. You can miss a victim with a thermal imaging camera as easy as you can searching and not find them too. It all has to do with training and understanding the cameras. So here's an, some examples of the decision-making cameras that are on the market. Clear K53 through K65, the Bullard LDX, NXT or QXT, Draeger UCF 8000 or 9000, the Scott X380, the Leader Series. I think they just got their NFPA certification. Argus MyTick and MSA 6000. I would probably add the Clear K33, even though it's 240 by 180, just because the resolution is better than some of the 320 by 240s because it uses image enhancement. I would not put the Scott V320, the Bullard Eco X, or any of those other cameras in here because they're a lower price point and they don't perform as well. So these are the ones that are currently what we consider a decision-making camera. If you want a copy of this list, please let me know after class. This is why refresh rate will hurt you. This is the K2. This is that college dormitory burn. I showed you a picture of us all sitting outside where we looked like we were going to die. 100 degree day in uh, West Virginia, he's going to point this camera at the burn barrel. I want you to notice about six or seven seconds into this video, 
When it picks up enough heat, you're going to see the image freeze. Then you're going to see a triangle show up. And then you're going to see color. But notice how long it takes to do that. Watch with me. That took four seconds for that green triangle to show up for the switch from high to low sensitivity. Watch again. Right. Yo. Average firefighter would scan right past that and miss that. Why is that important? Because if you don't understand how your camera switches from high to low sensitivity when it recognizes heat, you will scan across and miss the fire room. 